Hi, good day everyone. So welcome to this quick recap on our class last week on basic algebra. So this class is for anyone who uh, were not able to make um, last week's class or if you wanted a re-explanation of the topics that we did. Okay, if you wouldn't show off something. All right, so let me reiterate. This is just basic algebra, okay? So in our next class, we'll be moving on to some more um, challenging examples all right and some more topics as well so let's see here i had 10 oranges and someone stole a handful so i count the remaining oranges and i end up with five so we want to find out how many were stolen right so without thinking the amount that that was stolen is five because we had 10 we lost some and then we got five after so five was stolen right because 10 minus five is five but how could we represent our working for that mathematically, right? So this is where algebra comes in. So we can easily say that we had 10 oranges first and someone stole an amount as minus some amount and we put a question mark and then we have the five remaining, right? So now over here, let me just change this color so you don't get confused. We reach here, okay? So, I want to find the question mark. So, I need to get that question mark on one side of my equation only. Okay, so we can see that I have this 10 over here with it. So, I need to get rid of the 10. So, what can I do to get rid of 10? I minus 10. And in algebra, whatever we do on one side of this equal sign, so this is the left side and this is your right side, I also need to do on the other side. So if I minus 10 on this side to get rid of it, I need to minus 10 on this side. So boom, I need to minus 10 there as well. So 5 minus 10 is minus 5. Okay, if you take a look at the quick number line here, and we were at 5, and we needed to minus 10 spaces, we need to go back 10 spaces, and we will eventually reach minus 5 on our number line. Okay, so that's how negative numbers work as a quick crash course there. All right, so we have our negative question mark is equal to negative 5. Now, in algebra, when there is a sign, the sign is always attached to the number after it, right? So this is not 10, then minus, then question mark. This is 10 minus question mark, okay? This is not 5 minus 10. This is 5 minus 10, right? So the, the sign always goes along with the number after it. So we have a minus here and we have a minus here. A shortcut, we can just get rid of them. So the question mark is equal to five. And we know that's the answer because, you know, it's common sense, right? Five oranges were stolen. Now, in algebra, instead of putting a question mark all the time, we like to use letters, okay? And the most common letter that we use is X. Right, so let's take this example. X minus 5 is 10. So again, we want to get X on one side. So we need to move this minus 5. Remember, the sign is attached to the number. So to remove minus 5, to make minus 5 0, we need to plus 5. So we add 5 on both sides. So we get rid of this 5 here, and then we need to add 5 here. So X is 15. And again, when you reach an answer, in algebra you can take this answer x equals 15 and put the 15 back into this original equation here so this becomes 15 minus 5 equals 10 doesn't that make sense if you 15 minus 5 is 10 so that's how we could check over that our x is correct now to make algebra quicker okay instead of having to see you know plus 5 on both sides or minus 10 on both sides if someone told you that we moved from this line to this line and they didn't tell you you needed to add anything on both sides or anything like that, what would you have thought happened to this equation? You had this minus 5 here, but now in the other line, it was gone and you put plus 5 here. So someone might come up with, you, you moved this minus 5 onto this other side and you just changed the sign and that's exactly what happened there 
But we know that the mathematical reason why that happens is that we needed to add a 5 to both sides, right? To get rid of the minus 5 and to make, and we know we needed to repeat it on the other side. But it seems like we took minus 5, we put it on the other side, and we changed the sign. Let's look back at the first equation here, right? We had, we had a 10, and then in the other equation, bam, it went to the other side, disappeared from this side, and then it changed to minus 10. So again, it seemed like we moved the 10 and made it minus 10 when we moved it to the other side. And, and that's a shortcut we could use in algebra instead of having to see minus on both sides all the time, right? So we could just move the numbers across the equal sign and change the sign associated with the numbers. So a positive sign that moves across the equal sign becomes a negative number. And a negative number moving across the equal sign becomes a positive. Okay, so let's look at uh, some other examples here. Here we have 2x plus 4. 2x plus 4 equals 10. So this 2x, you know, this means 2 multiplied by x. In algebra, we when we're multiplying numbers like this, we don't need to write the multiplication sign. If you stick to a number and a letter together, it means multiplied. Okay, so this is 2x, whatever x is, we're multiplying by 2, plus 4 equals 10. So we can leave the 2x alone for now. We like the x's on one side of the equation only, and we want everything else on the other side. So we just move our, our plus 4 to the other side, it becomes negative 4, right? So 10 minus 4 is 6. So 2x is now equal to 6. Now how do we get rid of this 2? Remember, we want to find x only. We don't want to find 2x. Okay, if they ask us for 2x and 2x is 6, but they want to know how much x is, right? So if 2 multiplied by x equals 6, then 1x equals 3. Now we know that, right? We, we could get that, um, you know, by simple multiplication on our head, right? If 2 times a number is 6, obviously the number that we're trying to find is 3, because 2 times 3 is 6. But how did we get that? Well, if we divide this by 2, we could get rid of the 2. If we divide 2x by 2, the 2 will cancel, and we will just be left with x. But whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other side. So that's why the 6 also needs to divide by 2. Okay? And that's how we end up with x equals 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. Right, now let's look at this other example here. x divided by 2 now, minus 5 equals 11. Again, we want to leave this alone for now. Let's get rid of the number. So we move the minus 5 to the other side. It becomes plus 5 because we moved it. We the sign changed. So now we are left with x over 2 is equal to 16. We added the 11 and the 5. Now how do we get rid of a division? Well... The way we got rid of a multiplication was division. So if we want to get rid of a division, we multiply. So we need to multiply by the thing, by the divisor, okay? So x over 2, you want to get rid of that? You multiply both sides by 2. So the 2s will then cancel out, and you will be left with x. And you do it on the opposite side as well. So 16 multiplied by 2 is 32. Very simple, okay? Right. So let's go to this next example here, All right? This 3x on 2, let me erase this. All right, so this is a kind of combination of the last two examples we just did. Okay, so let's do it step by step. We move the plus 6 to the other side, it becomes a negative 6. So then we are left with this line here. 3x over 2 is equal to 9. So let's get rid of any, we can get rid of any one we want first, but let's get rid of the 2 first, right? This is a division by 2, so we need to multiply both sides by 2. When we do that, the 2's cancel, we are left with 3x is equal to 18, because we need to multiply the 9 by 2. Now we need to get rid of the 3. This is 3 multiplied by x, so to get rid of a multiplication, we divide. So when we divide by 3, the 3's cancel, x is equal to sorry, <laughs> x is equal to 6, and there we have it, right? That's some basic algebra there. So let's move on to a more complex topic. 
you having brackets in our algebraic equations, right? So, let's take 2 into 1 plus 3x. That's what 2 and brackets 1 plus 3x means. So, this means that we are taking the 2 and multiplying it by the 1 and also taking the 2 and multiplying by the 3x, okay? So, the 2 is multiplying by everything in the brackets. So, 2 into 1 plus 3x becomes 2 by 1, which is 2, and 2 by 3x, which is 6x, right? 3 by 2 is 6, right? So, let's use the brackets in our equation and try to find x, all right? So, here we go. 3 into 2 plus x, into 2x, sorry, plus 3 plus 1, outside the brackets, equals 28. So the first things first, let's simplify the brackets, right? So this is 3 by 2x and also 3 by 3. So 3 by 2x equals 6x. 3 by 3 equals 9. And then we have the plus 1 outside the brackets. We just bring that down. Okay? 9 plus 1 is 10. Very easy. So now we are left with 6x plus 10 equals 28. And this sounds very similar. All right? This is where we have always been. So we take the the 10, put it on the other side, it becomes negative 10. So we are left with 6x is equal to 18. Now 6 is a multiplication, we divide by 6 to get rid of it, and we will get x is equal to 3. Okay, very simple. However, sometimes both sides may have brackets, and this is again very simple, you just need to work one by one, one bracket at a time, right? So 5 into x plus 1 means 5 multiplied by x, 5 multiplied by 1 equals 2 into x minus 5 means 2 multiplied by x and 2 multiplied by negative 5, which is 2x minus 10. And then we have the 6 on the end, we just bring it down. So let's start to simplify some of these things now. Remember, we want all our x's on one side and all our numbers on the other side, okay? So we need to move this 2x over to the left-hand side by our 5x, and we need to move this 5 over to the other side, which has the numbers. So positive 2x, right, this doesn't have a negative sign by it, so that means it's positive, becomes negative 2x because you're moving it across the equal sign, right? And also the 5, which is positive 5, becomes negative 5 when you are moving it across, okay? So then you will end up at 5 minus 2x, on the same side and that will be 3x now Then when you move the 5 you get minus 10 plus 6 and then when you get the 5 minus 5 and then if you put this in a calculator you're going to get minus 9 so your final equation is going to read 3x equals minus 9 and again that is a multiplication we need to divide by 3 to get rid of that 3 when we divide by 3 here we will end up with negative 3 so x is negative 3 Okay? Everything is simple. We just need to work it little by little until we get it. And that really brings us to the end of basic algebra. Now, let's take a look at factorization before the next class, right? Because we're going to go more in depth in factorization. So, now factorization basically involves finding common things between numbers and x's in an equation, right? So let's say we have two numbers here, 6 plus 9. What is common between 6 and 9? 3. 3 could go into 6, and 3 could go into 9. Now, 3 could go into 6 two times, and 3 could go into 9 three times. So, just like our brackets in the algebra, we could write it like this. 3 into 2 plus 3, because when we multiply it back, just like the algebra, we got 3 by 2 is 6, 3 by 3 is 9. Isn't that the same thing as before? Now we just had put it back into our brackets. And that brackets is really factorization. That's what factorization is. Okay? So let's take a look at using factorizations for algebra. Okay? Where we have x's. So let's take this original term here. 6x plus 18. So what is common between... The 6x and the 18. 
the fact that 6 could go into 6 and 6 could go into 18, right? So therefore, we pull out the 6 from this equation. So this becomes 6 into x plus 3. If we multiply it back, we get 6 by x is 6x, and 6 by 3 equals 18. Okay? It's very simple if you take a look at it carefully. Now let's take one more example here. 7x plus 5x. Now, without, if anybody didn't ask us to factorize this, we could just literally add it and get 12x, right? But we're not doing that. We're trying to factorize, right? Just for factorization's sake. So what is common between these two terms? The 7 and the 5? No. We nothing could go into 7 that could go into 5, sadly, right? However, the x's, they both have x in them. So that is a common thing. So we pull that out, okay? So this becomes x into 7 plus 5. If we multiply them, x by 7, 7x. x by 5, 5x. Very simple, okay? And that's the basis of factorization. So in our next class, we'll do more factorization in all the different ways and methods that you need to know, okay? The final topic we'll do today is finding the subject of the formula. And this really tests your knowledge of how to move stuff across the equal sign. Okay, that's all it does. So let's take, for example, the simple equation x equals 5 plus 9. In this equation, x is the subject of the formula. Why? Because the subject of the formula is the term or the number that's by itself on one side of the equal sign. Okay? So every time we have been trying to find x, we have secretly been tr been making x the subject of the formula. Right? So it's basically the same thing that we are going to do now, except we don't necessarily need to find what x is. Right? Because sometimes they're going to give us something complicated like this. x plus 8 minus y equals z. It only have one number there and three numbers we don't know. So we can't actually find out what x is. Right? However, we could make x the subject of the formula. All we have to do here is we need to get rid of the y and get rid of the plus 8. And how do we do that? We move it to the next side of the equal sign. So if we move minus y, remember this is the number, minus y, across the equal sign it becomes plus y because the sign changes. If we move plus 8 across the equal sign it becomes negative 8 because the sign changes. So that leaves x on its own, and this becomes z plus y minus 8. And there, x is by itself. We have made x the subject of the formula. Okay? So let's look at some more complex ones now. Here are some letters, only letters, no numbers, right? So a, b equals c, d. Remember, if we jam up two things in algebra, it means that we are multiplying them, right? So this is actually a multiplied by b equals c multiplied by d and they want to make b the subject of the formula so if b is attached to a by multiplication we need to get rid of the a and how do we do that we divide by a look the a will cancel with the a right now the a can cancel with anything on the other side so this simply becomes b equals cd over a okay we can't do anything with that that is correct right no further steps needed. B is the subject of the formula. Let's take a look at one more. Oh, I think it's one. Oh, two more, sorry. But, so this is our second to last one. So x over y plus 9 equals a, b. And we want to make x the subject of the formula. So we need to get rid of the 9, and we need to get rid of this divided by y. Again, getting rid of the 9 is easy. We move it across, it becomes minus 9. So now we are left with x over y equals a b minus 9. The y is a division. So to get rid of the y, we need to multiply by y. And it becomes y cancel out with the y, and we are left with x. And then we need to multiply the other side by y as well. Now, we could have uh, multiplied the a b by y and get something like y a b, and then we need to multiply the minus 9, so we get minus 9 y. But we don't actually need to separate each one like that. Remember, we are multiplying the entire side by y. So we could just separate them. We could say, put a, b, minus 9 in the brackets, and just stick a y outside. Okay, and we will be left with x equals y into a, b, minus 9. Remember, we have done lots of these before. 
This means y multiplied by this and y multiplied by that. And that would have been yab minus 9y. The same thing as if we had multiplied them separately, okay? So there's no need to complicate yourself and multiply each term separately by the y, okay? You can join them up in the brackets and then multiply all of them by y, right? And they know, your examiners will know, that this is what you mean. When you say that y equals y, um, y into ab minus 9, that means y ab minus 9y. It means y is multiplying by the entire right side, okay? So that's all you need to do there. So if you have understood everything we did so far, let's put everything into this final um, equation here. Okay, so the original equation was v equals pi r squared h. And we needed to make r the subject of the formula, right? So here's our r, but it's a r squared, right? So we'll get into that very soon. First things first, we need to get rid of the pi, we need to get rid of the h, there are no signs in between them, so we assume that they mean multiplication, okay? So, to get rid of the multiplications, we simply need to divide by those numbers, or letters, right? So, to get rid of the pi, we divide it by pi, cancel out. To get rid of the h, we also divide it by h, cancel out. Whatever we do on one side, we do on the other side. So, we divide the v by the pi and the h as well, just like the other side, right? And finally, we are left with r squared equals v over pi h. That's how it's read, okay? v over pi h. However, they asked for r. So to get rid of the r squared, we need to square root the r squared. The square root is the opposite of squared. Just like how multiplication is the opposite of division, square root is the opposite of squared. So when we square root um, anything, right, it gets rid of the square over it. So that, that square disappears and becomes r. Whatever we do on one side, we need to do it on the other side. So we put a gigantic square root over the entire thing, and we are done. Simple, no further calculations necessary. We have successfully put r by itself on one side of the equation, and we are done. So this was a quick, basic algebra class. Um, it's very imperative that you understand the, the topics that we did today and the concepts that we did in order to understand when we go into more complex algebra in our subsequent classes, right? So, if you don't understand anything in this video, please don't hesitate to WhatsApp me, okay? I'll leave my number in the description so you can WhatsApp me. Any questions you have about algebra, right? Algebra is not hard. Right? Some people just need to be taught in different ways. And we could accomplish anything that we want to hear. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next class.